In a fight to the death where all predator creatures in the animal kingdom are bloodlusted, an animal known as the Devil's Lapdog stands a chance to unleash a fierce attack and prevail over other predators. This is because only a few animals can match them despite their small size. These vicious little beasts don't fear anything, and once committed, they adopt an attitude of win at all costs. They are exceedingly fearless, fierce, and equipped with razor-sharp claws and teeth with a crushing jaw. Welcome to Wildlife Science. Today, we are going to meet the fiercest weasel, the Wolverine. The skunk bear, the Indian devil, the devil bear, and the carcajo are some of the other names that this creature is known as. Although it looks like a tiny bear, the wolverine is actually the largest member of the weasel family. The wolverine is a little mammal that has a fierce reputation as a top predator in the wild, despite not being very big. This muscular, stocky animal has a relatively powerful bite, five toes on each paw, sharp semi-retractable claws, and small yet powerful limbs that aid them in hunting for their prey. They are omnivores and usually the seasons will determine what it will decide to eat during the time. Most of its diet during the sparse winter months consists of rodents, rabbits, and leftover carrion, which are the dead bodies of mammals. They have also been known to dig into burrows and devour hibernating mammals. These finds help them survive in the winter when other prey may be harder to come by. Yikes, talk about a rude awakening. One minute you're sleeping, and the next you're being attacked. But because of its tenacity, the wolverine may take on prey that is up to five times its size or more, like deers, caribou, and even huge elks and moose. A creature that small and it's willing to try and hunt a moose? Wow, when Marvel Comics named their iconic X-Men character Wolverine, they really chose the name of an excellent animal for that character. With a bite to the neck, which separates the tendons and crushes the throat, the wolverine kills its prey no matter the size. In the summer, berries and plants are the primary sources of food. However, when they don't feel like hunting, the willy wolverine will seek out any opportunity to steal a kill from another predator in order to save time and energy on the chase. It's been caught chasing away much larger predators like bears and cougars. How insane is that? Through millions of years of evolution, it has evolved to survive in the colder regions of the northern hemisphere. The wolverine today occupies extensive swaths of Canada, Russia, and Scandinavia which are cold, high-latitude environments. Alaska and a few sporadic and remote areas of the Rocky Mountains and the Sierras of California are a few other places they can be found. Its lifestyle is best suited to the vast, desolate northern forests and tundra because they provide the most space for it to roam. These hardy creatures live alone and require a lot of space to wander. In a quest for food, individual wolverines can cover up to 15 miles each day just to look for something to eat. Wolverines frequently visit the isolated boreal woods, taiga, and tundra in the northern latitudes due to these ecological needs. Lucky for most animals that they only like to live in the cold, or they would be in some serious trouble. The fur is brown or black in hue with a yellow or gold colored stripe running from the top of the head to the bottom. Wolverines were once hunted and murdered across North America and Europe for their fur. Although this practice is far less popular today, their fur was once used to line parkas. The animal's face, neck, and chest all have distinctive patterns, which is what probably got most people interested in their fur in the first place. The wolverine's body is roughly 26 to 34 inches long, plus the tail's additional 7 to 10 inches, and a weight of anywhere between 24 and 40 pounds, which makes them roughly the same size as several dog breeds, but still much more fierce. The creature can move surprisingly well in the snow, at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour due to its powerful body structure. Apart from that, they are also very skilled at swimming and climbing, and according to certain studies, wolverines are quite cunning and intelligent creatures. It has been known to remove bait from traps that scientists have set in order to collar the animal. Wow, smart, agile, climber, and swimmer? How amazing is this animal? In the majority of its territory, the wolverine is an apex predator. They have a minimal number of additional natural predators, despite being a relatively smaller animal. The majority of other animals won't attempt to harm it due to their fierce attitude and sharp claws. The wolves and a few others are some of the only animals that will try to mess with them. A whole pack is capable of pinning down a wolverine and preventing it from running away. Despite that, wolverines will continue to fight ruthlessly no matter what. 
Now, the Wolverine can be best described in these situations as that friend who thinks they can take anyone when they get drunk. But unlike such friend, a Wolverine will actually put up quite the fight. Wolverines may not be able to kill a pack of wolves, but they put up an incredible fight despite the odds against them. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, the Wolverine may not kill the wolf, but it will definitely fight back until the wolf has had enough and just leaves. And the Wolverine usually wins this fight. Now, believe it or not, they have the same valor when it comes to fighting bears. You heard that right, this little creature will fight a bear. Now, it definitely won't kill it, but it will rain such hell on the bear that the bear decides to just leave the Wolverine alone. Now, that is bravery, a truly resilient warrior to the end. Now, you're probably thinking, if they can scare off a wolf and a bear, are they dangerous to humans? Well, there have been no reported attacks of wolverines on humans, and they do tend to avoid people. But like any other animal out there, if you mess with them, well, you get the claws or the fangs. So, just don't mess with them. Come on, they aren't afraid of bears. You think you could stand a chance against them? The fiercely independent wolverine likes a solitary existence. The wolverine's den, which serves as the focal point of its existence, is typically made out of a small cave, rock crevice, a tree that has fallen, or a previously used burrow where it can dig a rough bed of grass and leaves. They hardly ever get along with individuals of the same sex since they will fight each other constantly over territory and food. The only time they get together is during the mating season. Like most mammals, they are polygamous. Males scent mark their territories and share them with multiple females. However, this breeding approach is rather unequal. While some wolverines might mate repeatedly, others might mate infrequently. When the breeding season begins, usually in May and ends in August, the female will be the one who first initiates the mating session. Following their initial connection, the couple spends a few days alone to engage in sexual activity before parting ways. It is well known that female wolverines have delayed implantation, meaning that the eggs float around the uterus for some time before latching. Because of this, the young are born between January and April when the food is in ample supply. This way, she can eat and feed her young. Each late winter or early spring, females make a burrow in the snow or under a comparable layer of protection to give birth to two or three pups. She becomes the sole provider for the young ones, since the father only has minimal influence. For the males, just a wham-bam thank you ma'am situation and nothing more. Then he goes back to his life of solitude and constant fighting. Pretty much the life of a road warrior, and yeah, no child support for her. After she gives birth, the young ones are born entirely reliant on their mothers, yet they soon start to grow swiftly. At three months, they're completely weaned from their mother's milk. At roughly five to seven months, the young ones are then completely independent and capable of hunting for themselves. Although sexual maturity might take two to three years, it takes about a year to reach full size. In the wild, the wolverine can live for seven to twelve years on average, depending usually on its luck. But when you're as fierce as they are, that usually helps in increasing your chances of survival. Wolverines may not be the biggest predators in the world, but they are without a doubt the bravest, that hunt some of the biggest animals, and don't back down from a fight from whatever possesses a threat to them, no matter the size or the odds. A truly amazing beast.